this is perfect. Hello everybody, Osa Disaster here with a quick video. Recently, Laura Croft has been announced to be a skin. I think she might actually be out now for Fortnite. Everyone is saying that Fortnite is now the shooter crossover smash game, right? It is Smash Bros, but you have guns. You're you're shooting. And I can, I can honestly say I agree with that. We have a lot of crossover characters now. We have Star Wars characters, Marvel characters. We have, uh, who else? We have Laura Croft. We have Master Chief. We have Kratos. We have uh, the Predator. So there are people coming in from film, from popular IP, from popular video game franchises. It's literally anyone that wants to promote their, you know, their franchise, their IP. So... Was that a bad thing? Absolutely not. Uh, it might be a little bit cringe to some people. It definitely was to me at first, but it makes sense from a business standpoint for sure. Bringing it back to Smash, and I want you guys to comment down below, especially if you're familiar with kind of like how these deals work. I'm not quite sure how you would unless you worked for Nintendo or one of these companies, but my question is, from my knowledge, from my understanding, in negotiations for a character being in Smash, Nintendo normally has to give something to the other company and both of them have to reach an agreement before that character can be locked in, right? So for an example, say Microsoft said, okay, Nintendo, you can have Master Chief, but we want this, whether it be royalties or a lump sum or something like that, right? If Nintendo says, okay, we'll do that, it's fine. Or Nintendo can have a counter offer throw it back, and if Microsoft says yes, we'll do it, then boom, they're locked in. Master Chief is in Smash. My question is, do you guys think there's terms with that? For example, do you think Nintendo would say, okay, we're going to do this, but that means Master Chief cannot appear in any other type of video game until he's been released in Smash, because it kind of, you know, makes it less... The whole appeal for Smash DLC is, like, we don't know who it's going to be. If it's a big character, Master Chief is a much-wanted character in the game. And Nintendo probably doesn't want that feeling to go away if he just got released in another game. So do you guys think that Fortnite character crossovers, does that possibly deconfirm them for Smash Bros? I don't know, and I just want to know your guys' opinion on it. I'm sitting here thinking about it. You guys know how I am about fan theories and trying to predict patterns. And I know Nintendo and Sakurai kind of do whatever in regards to DLC. They try to do fan service, but they're not, you know, going to just listen to the fans and be like, oh, they only want this character, they don't want this, you know what I mean? So I'm just trying to, I'm sitting here trying to think because Master Chief is in Fortnite. Lara Croft is in Fortnite. So do you guys think we're going to see them in the Smash Fighter Pass as the last two DLC characters? I don't know. It, it, it's very interesting. Does it also change? I guess the better question is, would you guys be upset if they were the last two DLC characters? If Master Chief and Laura Croft were the last two DLC characters for Fighter Pass Volume 2, would you be upset because they're in Fortnite right now? Not because they're in Fortnite, but because they've been announced for Fortnite so recently in this year. It's just something to think about. Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you made it all the way through. I'm OCD Disaster, and I hope you have a smash-tastic rest of your day.